My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my God and Angel, intercede for me. In the Gospel of Luke, there are three references, three moments where it talks about haste. First of all, there's the haste of Our Lady going to her cousin Elizabeth. There's the haste of the shepherds. The shepherds went with haste to Bethlehem after they'd had the message from the angels. And then the third time, know what it is? Well, it's when Jesus meets Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus climbs up the tree to see Jesus and our Lord says to him, Zacchaeus, make haste. I must dine at your house today. And Zacchaeus, we're told, hastens to come down. And these three episodes speak to us of a holy haste in the presence of God. When God enters your life, somehow it speeds up. It's not a question of going into fast motion or starting to rush. But life takes on a new meaning, a new intensity. We could say a holy haste. It's not that Christians are always rushing around, but rather it's a spring in your step, as opposed to the sad lethargy of a life without God. Now I mention this because this has nothing to do with today's gospel. Confused? Well, nothing to do with today's gospel, but in another sense, everything to do with today's gospel. What do I mean? Let me explain. Well, I have to confess that the link is uniquely through a bad pun, a play on words. People who know me know that I like bad jokes or bad puns, and this is one, because today's gospel is all about fasting. And I want to focus on this, but in the sense of going fast. Get it? Funny, isn't it? Ha! Huh? Fasting? Going fast? Oh, well, never mind. Of course, if the fact is it only works in English, well, if work is the best way to describe such a bad pun. But let's go to the Gospel. Jesus, we want you to teach us everything. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. And people came and said to him, Why do John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees fast, but your disciples do not? It's a good question, Jesus, that they ask you. And we're going to see in a moment your answer. But somehow John's disciples were considered more holy for being rigorous for fasting. And there's a good point that we're not more holy uniquely for fasting. We're not more holy uniquely for being more rigorous. It's the spirit with which we do it. Indeed, Jesus, you warned us in the Gospel of Matthew about fasting to impress. They've had their reward. That's hypocrisy. Now, Lent is about five weeks away. We're in ordinary time. So it's not a time for hard penance, although it's good that we always have our daily little sacrifices. But it is a good time to speed up in our search for God, to hasten towards Him, to go a bit faster towards God. St. Paul, on various occasions, talks of running to God, racing to God. One gets the sense that he really liked athletics. And he makes the point that only one wins. So we have to run to win. Now it's not a question of competing against each other. And I think what he means is that we have to win against ourselves. Win against our vices. Athletes in a middle distance race have to make sure they're in a good position, ready for the final lap, and then the last straight. They're not yet sprinting, but they are beginning to speed up. They, they have to make sure that they're in the right position so that when the last lap comes, and particularly the last straight, they really can give it their full their full effort, but they have to be there. And that means every now and then speeding up, making sure they're not lagging behind, making sure they're exactly where they want to be. They're not sprinting, but they are speeding up. They're going faster. And that should be us now, in this ordinary time, as we look forward to Lent. And yes, we need to look forward to it and pray to the Lord, Lord, help me to go faster in Lent. Help me to want Lent. Help me to even want a bit of sacrifice. Help me to desire it. Perhaps now is the time to pray for this, to ask for a bit of generosity in Lent, so that we don't just enter into it reluctantly. Am I running to God? Are you, Jesus, my goal, my finishing line? Do I really want to win you? And yes, in a sense, fasting, self-denial, is a bit about going faster. 
racing to Christ and therefore leaving things behind which slow us down. San Josemir describes having visited a battlefield during the Spanish Civil War and seeing all sorts of objects strewn around the ground. It was explained to him that these actually were left behind by the victors in their rush to push forward to overcome the enemy. So precisely in order to win, they left things behind. You can't race to Christ with lots of possessions or creature comforts. Yes, when Christ is with us, we can feast, as you tell us Jesus in the Gospel. And Jesus said to them, Can the wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? As long as they have the bridegroom with them, they cannot fast. Well, in the church there are times of feasting and fasting. And we've just been through one. Christmas is very much a time of feasting, as is Easter later on. But it's not like an on-off switch. It's a bit like one of those lights you can adjust, increasing or lessening the light. And there's, in between these different seasons, there can be a bit of sort of variation. So that precisely that's what we're trying to live now. We're not in that intense time of penance and, and prayer, which is Lent. But we are trying to increase a little bit the, the intensity, the, the, the temper, if you like, the speed. We're going a little bit faster. A little bit moving towards the self-denial of Lent. And we're picking up our pace now. Jesus, you tell us the days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them. And then they will fast in that day. Picking up the pace after Christmas. We've had the bridegroom with us. And of course, Jesus, you're always with us. But there are times when we feel more your presence. And there are times when we feel more your absence. And Lent is a bit more the absence and then our Lord gives some examples which suggest freshness. No one sews a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. If he does, the patch tears away from it, the new from the old, and a worse tear is made. And no one puts new wine into old wineskins. If he does, the wine will burst the skins, and the wine is lost, and so are the skins. But new wine is for fresh skins. Jesus, you're talking about that freshness of a spirit, that youthful attitude which is ready to receive your good wine. And telling these people then that one wouldn't think of fasting while the bridegroom is present, i.e. the apostles needn't fast because Jesus is among them. Jesus is not encouraging a worldly attitude of eat, drink and be merry. He's not encouraging us Christians to spend our time eating and drinking or a false gluttonous mentality. In fact, when you reach the point that when all you want to do is feast and eat and enjoy banquets and luxury, you've actually ceased to be young. You've become an old cloth or an old wineskin. A young heart, while you might certainly enjoy an occasional banquet, is actually ready for any sacrifice and doesn't want to spend all his time in banquets. That would be boring. Young lovers, true lovers, will go through any hardship to win and keep the one they love. They also want to live, to do things, to get on in their career, to travel, to explore life, to burn energy through exercise, and not just spend all their lives feasting. So Jesus, in calling on us to be these good, fresh wineskins, or this fresh cloth, this unstretched cloth, you're calling us to have that freshness of heart, that youth of heart, which is precisely a heart in love. And then life becomes for us a constant wedding feast while we are ready for any sacrifice to serve Christ and his mission because we love him. And then just as there's a good fasting, a speeding up in our relationship with God, there's also a good slowing. We need to slow down to pray. We need to give time to God. Not always rush, rush, rush. Our world is a world of frenetic activity, rush, noise. In fact, the devil wants this because he doesn't want us to pray. The poet Tom Gunn has these powerful words to say. One joins the movement in a valueless world, choosing it, till both hurler and the held. One moves as well, always toward, toward. Always movement, always being hurled, hurling and being held. Toward, not knowing what toward, not having any clear sense of meaning, but towards something. So, yes, fasting, but also slowing. Slowing down to pray. To give time to God and others. To give time to speak. To give time to family. To give time to love. To give time to listen. Slow down. So yes, this is a time of 
fasting in the sense of going a bit quicker in our relationship to God as we look forward to Lent giving him a bit more priority not holding back we're so slow to go to God at times but as it's a holy haste it needs the slowness the calmness of prayer the slowing down and we see that in Our Lady Our Lady listened carefully to God through the angel she said yes to him with that holy slowness to deliberate to be clear about what God wanted there was no rush there And then she was able to go in haste to help her cousin and speak about God. To share the good news of God's greatness with her. There we do want haste to be a bit quicker in our work of evangelization. I give you thanks my God for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask for help to put them into effect. My mother immaculate, Saint Joseph my father and lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.